There's several things that have uh, come out recently with regards to, to diabetes in both dogs and cats. Um, the first is the issue surrounding uh, insulin resistance in diabetic cats. And insulin resistance is probably the most common problem we see when we're trying to manage cats with diabetes. And typically it falls into two big categories. We try and uh, rule out management problems, things that are happening at home. And then if everything seems to be normal, we try and rule out uh, medical issues. And in the last couple of years, it's become obvious that probably the most common medical problem that occurs in cats that results in insulin resistance is a disease called acromegaly. And acromegaly is a disorder associated with the pituitary. And so in these uh, cats, and they tend to be older male cats, their pituitary is secreting increased levels of growth hormone. And growth hormone stimulates the release of another hormone called insulin-like growth factor, or IGF-1. And as IGF-1 levels go up in the blood, it antagonizes the release of insulin from the pancreas, but it also antagonizes the action of insulin at the level of the receptor. So frequently the cats present with very severe insulin resistance, which is usually defined as them taking more than one and a half units per kilogram uh, twice a day of insulin, or more than three to four units twice a day of basal insulins like glargine or levomir. The diagnosis of acromegaly is pretty straightforward. We used to only look for it in cats that looked acromegalic. So the cats with big heads, uh, poor dentition, heart murmurs, uh, and arthritis. But based on a recent paper, about 38% of cats with diabetes were diagnosed with insulin-resistant diabetes secondary to acromegaly. So the way that you can diagnose it is just to send a blood sample. Uh, we can't measure feline growth hormone in the United States. No one has an assay for it. So we measure IGF-1, and we send our samples to Michigan State. They have the most experience with it. And the finding of a severely elevated IGF-1, uh, values greater than 300, in the face of a cat with insulin-resistant diabetes usually makes the diagnosis of acromegaly. Uh, we can confirm the diagnosis with imaging like CT or MRI, uh, which generally will show that the cats have a pituitary macroadenoma. Treatment options right now are kind of limited. Uh, the primary treatment being utilized is radiation therapy. Radiation therapy will shrink the tumor, uh, decrease IGF-1, but it won't normalize it. So typically what we see are uh, the diabetes is a little bit better controlled, but not very many cats go into diabetic remission. And the problem with continued high uh, concentrations of IGF-1 is that it leads to congestive heart failure as a result of cardiomyopathy. Uh, more recent treatment is the availability of doing pituitary surgery, uh, a procedure called um, transphenoidal hypophysectomy, where we go in through the oral cavity using an endoscope and remove the tumor uh, through the mouth uh, as we enter into the cella. That's been shown to be effective in cats uh, with acromegaly, not only in getting rid of the tumor, but also in reversing the diabetes because we do get normalization of IGF-1. And currently there's some research being done on looking at medications like somatostatin analogs, which may decrease IGF-1 levels from these tumors as well as shrink the tumors. So I think that as we gain more knowledge about acromegaly in cats, it is obvious it is the number one cause of insulin resistance in cats, and it looks like we're going to have some good treatment options.